Hello guys, good morning. Today we are gonna do a little bit of cooking. I'm gonna share with you guys this super easy bread recipe. This is my favorite because it does not take overnight or hours or crazy amounts of time. It's so easy to make. We're also gonna do tomato soup, a delicious spinach and garlic pasta, and then just a quick little mostly store-bought strawberry shortcake dessert. So cooking with Angie, here we go. We're starting with the bread and y'all, I love this recipe because it really is so, so easy. Um, I will have everything linked down below in the description box, um, all the information that you need, the measurements and all of that, but it's really just flour, a little bit of salt, some rapid rise yeast, and warm water. Once you combine those things together, you just kind of give them a, a rough stir, make sure everything is incorporated. And then you're just going to cover the bowl with plastic wrap and set it aside um, for about an hour. And that gives it time for all of that, you know, the yeast to activate and everything and for the, the dough to start to rise. But it really only takes an hour. You set that to the side. About 40 minutes after you've set the bread to the side, you're gonna take your cast iron, I have like these Dutch ovens, and you wanna set the oven to 450 and then put the cold Dutch ovens into there with the lids on, nothing inside of them, and let them get warmed up while the oven is preheating. Um, so while all that's taking place, I'm also gonna start working on the pasta. This is just a really great, I mean, you could absolutely do this for a dinner and come up with some other side dishes and stuff to go with it, but this to me is like the perfect yummy lunch. So it involves a lot of garlic. Um, all of these recipes are doubled for our family. So you're gonna see a lot of garlic and a lot of seasonings and stuff, but I did double the recipes. So this just is such a delicious, yummy, yummy pasta. The one thing I did not have double of was spinach, which is unfortunate because it's delicious and makes the recipe so much better, but we were a little low on spinach. I needed to get two boxes of it and I only got one. While I'm chopping all that up, I'm also letting water come to a boil for the pasta. Now this is something that I remember like Rachel Ray and others doing is adding salt to the water. It's your chance to sort of season the pasta. And then I add a tiny bit of oil just so that the pasta doesn't all stick together. Um, so I'm using bow tie pasta for this, which is one of my favorites for recipes like this because you know just the size of the noodle itself lets it like grab onto the spinach and the other things and I don't know I feel like it goes well together when you're mixing other things in and then of course butter the best part delicious delicious butter and yep I'm using a whole stick like I said I'm doubling this recipe so there's a lot of butter and garlic So now I'm just adding in the spinach and letting that wilt uh, with the butter and garlic mixture. Again, you would be doing this more like in phases if you had more spinach. I really needed two boxes of that spinach to double the recipe, um, but it just takes a second to let that wilt down. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of seasoning, some dried basil goes in there, uh, as well as some salt. I use the pink salt and of course some black pepper. So I'm gonna mix all that up and then just set it to the side. Um, once the spinach is wilted, um, you know, you wanna take it off of heat and set it to the side to wait for the pasta. I knew that the heart is never light. Felt like the sun can give a sigh. And I fell from and the first time I met you, baby. And while I'm waiting for that pasta, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bread. So once that's had that full hour to rise, you're going to bring your bread over and you don't want to handle it a ton. So you wanna get it out and you wanna set it on your little board here and use some flour and stuff like that so it's not too terribly sticky. And then you're just gonna fold it into itself, you know, 10, 12, 
15, I don't know, somewhere around that. Not a ton, but enough to kind of get it all incorporated and folded into itself. And then you just take your hands and shape it into a ball. Like I said, I don't know, you know, touching it too much. This doesn't need to be perfect. We're not trying to make any beautiful shapes or cuts or anything like that. Just into that kind of ball shape. And then you're gonna put it on some parchment paper. So you wanna pull out a thing of parchment paper. I just reuse the same bowl plop the dough ball back in there and give it about another 15 minutes to sit like that, um, uncovered just like that. And then I'm gonna head back over and drain my pasta. Oh my life. Now I'm going to add the spinach mixture into there. And like I said, I wish there had been more. It would have made it probably even, I mean, this stuff tastes amazing. If you like garlic, butter, spinach, any of that, it's so, so good. And then you're gonna take some cream cheese and I just kind of break mine up with my fingers. This is room temperature cream cheese. So it's been sitting out on the counter for a good hour or so. Um, you're gonna add some cream cheese and then some milk. Now I had some heavy cream, so I thought I would try that and I think it's a little too thick. I think you definitely just need to go with milk. So I used half heavy cream and half milk, um, but all milk is, is what you need to do here. It, it definitely works out better. And then you just wanna mix all that up and let the warmth of the noodles melt that cream cheese. Oh, it's so good. Then I'm just gonna cut up some strawberries. I just gave these strawberries a rinse. Now I was at the grocery store and they just looked too good to pass up. I love strawberry shortcake and uh, I wasn't gonna take the time to make any of that today, like homemade from scratch. But this is the way that I like to do it is just cut up my strawberries, put them in a bowl, and then uh, I sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top and cover the bowl and put it in the fridge for a few hours and let that just kind of like get all those juices out and become almost like a simple syrup, uh, strawberry syrup. So the, you know, the strawberries get real soft and they've got kind of a syrupy glaze in there. So pop that in the fridge. Then we're gonna head back to the oven. You don't even need to take the things out. You're just gonna lift up that piece of parchment paper, lay it inside of the bowl. You wanna make sure that you've kind of got like a little, um, a little glove, if you will, a little a little scoop, if you will, that's holding that bread in there with the parchment paper. And you're just gonna put them in, put the lid back on them, and then let those hang out in the oven for about 30 minutes. And while that is happening, I'm gonna head over and start working on my tomato soup. I absolutely love this tomato soup. I love tomato soup in general, but I love this tomato soup with a little bit of red pepper flakes and fire roasted tomatoes. It's so delicious. I have to be honest with you, I am very much looking forward to, I'm hoping this summer, being able to make almost this entire recipe from stuff we've grown here because all of this is obviously store-bought, onions, garlic, tomatoes. Um, and this recipe is good with canned tomatoes or fresh tomatoes. I've made it both ways. Um, but the fire roasted canned tomatoes and the red pepper uh, flakes, I think really are what give it that flavor. It's got, if you add the right amount, it's got just a little kick when you're eating it and a smidge of a kick after you've finished. It's so delicious. And with the homemade bread, I'm telling you, it's the best. So you're just going to pop those onions and some butter in there and let those kind of brown up. So you're gonna add in some salt and pepper, let those kind of brown up. Then you'll add in your garlic. Um, as well as, like I said, some red pepper flakes. These are the best part, and I have to be very careful because I can go overboard on the red pepper flakes because I love it so much. You're also gonna add some uh, dried oregano, and oh, it smells so good, I'm telling you. I some One of the kids opened the back door, and CR was in the backyard working on something, and he was like, the smells, he could smell them like all the way back in the backyard coming from the house. It did smell delicious. Um, you're also gonna use some dried basil here. This recipe uses some dried basil and some fresh basil, but this part of it, you're gonna be using the dried basil. Once that's brown, you're gonna add in the garlic and let that cook up about another minute or so, just depending, again, this is a doubled recipe, so I got a lot going into this pot. 
Then you're gonna add your tomatoes. So like I said, you can use canned or fresh. Um, these are two big cans of whole tomatoes and then two cans of fire roasted. Again, this is doubled, so if you wanted to make a normal portion size, then you would um, just use one can of whole, one can of fire roasted. So you're gonna mix all of that in there, and then um, my bread was calling me, so I had to go take a quick break and pull that out. So what you're gonna do is pull these out. You wanna take your lids off, and then remove the bread um, and the parchment paper and just put the bread back into the Dutch oven without any of the paper or the lid. Try not to drop it on the counter like I'm about to do. <laughs> just set it back in there like that and put it back in for about another 10 to 15 minutes to really kind of brown up the top and get that nice crispy, um, you know, just oh, the delicious like crunchy crispy layer over the top of the bread. So those go back in for another 10 to 15 minutes. Now we're back to the tomato soup. So now you're also going to add in um, four cups of chicken broth, eight in this case, like I said, because I doubled the recipe. So eight cups of chicken broth are going in here. And then you're gonna let that come to a boil. Again, this is a lot of food in here, so it did take a little while, um, but it's, it's so, so worth it. So let that come to a boil. Oh, it smells so delicious. I took this opportunity to do a little bit of cleanup. My kitchen was an absolute disaster. I, especially when I'm making multiple things, if I'm just making one thing, I can usually kind of stay on top of keeping my kitchen clean while I'm cooking. But when I'm making this many different things, I just have stuff everywhere and I make a big giant mess, especially when I'm like juggling. Okay, I gotta put this in and do this and that's browning and I need to come back over here and, yeah, I just made a big giant mess. So I'm gonna clean that up. And then pull that bread out. Oh, look at that. Guys, it's so, so delicious. It's so easy too. Like I could make this bread every single day and I think that my family would like me to. So once the tomato soup is come to a boil, you're gonna turn it down to low and let that simmer for at least 15 to 20 minutes, but as long as you can. I like to let mine simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I'm gonna top my spinach pasta with a little bit of fresh Parmesan, shredded Parmesan. Um, that just gives it a little extra kick on the top. This pasta is really, really good. Um, and you can absolutely eat that with bread. I just wanted to show you guys how delicious this bread looks. It's so, so good. You also, once it comes out, wanna let it sit for about 15 minutes to cool before you cut into it. Trust me, if you're somebody who loves a warm slice of bread, it will still be warm, but give it like 10 to 15 minutes to, to rest before you slice into it. Now the hard part. I do not have an immersion blender and I do not know why. I used to have one at our old house and I must have gotten rid of it when we decluttered and I do not know what I was thinking. I must have had some kind of a, a brain fart, brain lapse. I do not know what the hell I was thinking getting rid of my immersion blender. So into the regular blender. You're definitely gonna have to do this in phases because it will splash all over you. But you wanna blend up all of that delicious, delicious tomato soupness until it's nice and just you know, a creamy texture, it doesn't have any chunks in it, add a little bit of heavy cream to it and stir that in. And that just thickens it up a little bit. Mine was decently thick anyways. This is very varied depending on the type of tomatoes that you use. Um, the whole canned tomatoes definitely make it thicker than a lot of times fresh tomatoes. There's a lot of juices in those. So I sprinkle mine over the top with a little bit of fresh basil. All my grocery store had was Thai basil, which was actually really good. It does taste different than regular basil and it was delicious. So that with a slice of that fresh bread, oh, get in my belly. The kids love it, Rosie loves it. My teenage daughter was hanging out by the pot waiting for it to finish so that she could scoop her up a serving. And this bread, I've eaten half of a loaf of this bread so far. It's delicious. And you nailed the soup again. Mm. It's delicious. Last, the little shortcake cups. 
this is like I said, I mean, it's kind of silly that I'm showing you this, but I was making them, so I figured I'd show you. I just pop those strawberries into those little cups, top them with a little bit of whipped cream, and they're such a good little dessert. I love them. Nice and light. Those little uh, angel food cake cups are light. They don't feel like a heavy, heavy cake um, with a little bit of whipped cream, and it's a delicious dessert, especially as it starts to get hotter. This is a great, like, summertime dessert. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Be sure to subscribe if you've not already, and I will see you guys again very very soon. Bye. She headed out on that four o'clock train. Since then I've been going insane. Susie.